Andrew, and I'm Zach. We are uh, coming to you live from the dungeon. The dungeon. Uh, Mars Hill Music. Mm. And yeah, we're going to be hanging out, talking, going to play a couple tunes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I realize the not having a beard competition. The shadow it's makes me look like I don't have lips, so it's just kind of one giant glob of hair. Dude, so you just released an album. I did. It's called The Water and the Blood. And yeah, it's it is uh, it's a a worship record. It's mostly written for singing. In church, uh, there's one song in there that's a little bit outside that that realm. But yeah, first time I've uh, done something like that. What's your favorite song on it? Mmm, that's tough. Um, I really like uh, "Suffering Servant." Mm. Um, I like I like kind of the the arc of the song as it builds, uh, and it's one of my favorite scriptures in Isaiah 52, 13 through 53, 12, and uh, just this amazing uh, presentation. Of, it's a prophecy 700 years before Jesus was even born about what he would come uh, to mm -hmm. do. Uh, so I, I always just trip out when I do read it. And, uh, that song is insane. Good job, man. Thanks. It's really good. So you guys know, <clears throat> if you got questions, comment. We'd love to get some questions going. You're going to play some songs later, maybe. Yes. We'll bribe you a little bit. What song do you hate off the album? No, I'm just kidding. That'd be awesome. Um, so this is, in comparison to like the other projects that you've done, how does this one kind of measure up to that one? You know, as far as just like, obviously it's a totally different. Um, it's different on like every yeah. level. It's just different. It's a different purpose for what the songs you're doing. They're not just a song to be a song. It's a song meant to be sung in specific context. Um, so put certain parameters on it that uh, you, you want the range to be a little tighter, you want consistency to be really high, you want um, the clarity to be super high. Uh, you still want it to be to be something that's um, that's beautiful and artful, but but there's a difference where you can kind of get away with uh, some ambiguity with, with stuff, something that's just art. Um, you don't want to be having a you know. 500 people singing something, they're like, wait, what did that mean? Like, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's not the point of what you're yeah. trying to do. So, you want it to be clear but compelling. Um, and then even the musically, uh, I, you know, I've done the, the Thrice stuff, and I've done some solo stuff, which is a little, a little more folky. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is, is kind of between, um, in, in certain ways, and even just melodically, I think it's, it's different than, than anything I've done, but I think it actually shows some of some of what I uh, would bring to the table with the Thrice stuff in just the way that uh, I really care about melodies, and I would have to take all the ideas of Thrice stuff and be like, all right, how do we make this into like one thing? So bring things together uh, and really trying to make it a solid song throughout that, that moved in a, a certain story arc. Or, mm. so. Yeah, and then even recording it, Doing it like where I wrote the whole record and then it didn't have it arranged as the record. Whereas with Thrice or something, it'd be like, all right, here's everyone's parts, here, whatever, mm -hmm. and then we record. And this was like, sure. got the core of the song, the skeleton. Now let's go in there. And then we had a, a couple guys in there. We basically work out 75% of the song uh, that day and track it. So then we come back and, and kind of finish it up later. Uh, but I've never made a record like that. And it was, it was really interesting. So, Dude. That's crazy. So going from like doing the thrice thing, doing your solo stuff, to doing worship music, like what's been some of the biggest influences for you? Because obviously you were able to like play that music for lots of people, you know, with thrice and your solo stuff, and people would respond to that in different ways. But how does that like? What kind of like guides were you using and just writing songs for like people to sing in the church, you know? Because there's obviously a difference there, because it's not so much performance as it is an actual participatory thing. So, yeah, um, I think there's probably things that are that are good that I did on that I'll see over time that um, I think will be different than kind of mm -hmm. a lot of the standard models for what works for that. Um, I think there'll be things that are 
are not as helpful, but I think that's some of what we're trying to push in Marcel Music is like what what actually is helpful um, as mm -hmm. far as uh, what we sing, how we sing. So um, uh, generally, the you know the kind of CCM like it's just there's there's a little bit of a formula to what works, um, and I think I think we actually have a lot to learn from just people who have written songs that are like people want to sing these songs like Chris Tomlin or something like people love singing that dude's songs like uh, Hill song people love singing the songs and and so I think there's things that they're doing well that um, that I think we can learn from but. Uh, I think some of the, the strengths of, of what we're doing and some of the strengths of this record um, is that there's just a, a, a sense that we're trying to kind of have some more theological depth in the songs, um, a more robust presentation of the gospel, of what Jesus has done for us and what that means, um, and the freedom that comes in that. Um, so that's the stuff that I've, I'm excited about, I, and I've seen... What's been really cool is, is seeing kind of people responding to the mm -hmm. record, and these are the things they're picking up. They're like, it's, I mean, it's, it's just the, the lyrics are very logically well crafted. They're, um, I think a lot of what people are picking up is, I've just seen so many tweets of people being like, I was, I just, I'm in tears listening to this, mm -hmm. and it's just like, that's amazing. Right. And so, I think what that is is uh, mostly hearing. Hearing the gospel, mm. hearing like oh, I mean, we don't just need to hear the gospel once. Like our hearts just constantly are kicking out, understanding the truth of the gospel, and and so hearing in a new format. In this case, through through music, uh, it has a different way of kind of getting mm. in, and um, so that's been really cool to see. Uh, and people just being like, man, I, I just feel like I don't. A lot of people being like, I don't listen to worship music because there's nothing that. That I feel like, either theologically or musically or whatever, is uh, I can relate to or is impacting me. Uh, and so I think what's been cool is seeing as Marcel is is putting out these releases that uh, people who have been in that spot are like, I'm so thankful for for what's going on in that. So I'm really glad to be a part of it. Dude, well the album has definitely been awesome. It's been really cool to be able to play those songs in the church. It'll be cool to hear what people say. We got any questions? Questions? Yeah, guys? kick you a couple. Peter asks, when I perform, I act confident and get good feedback, but always feel a tightness in my throat and get super nervous, though I hide it well. How can I get more confident with singing? Okay. Dustin? Um, confidence. Sounds like that's just like kind of a general question, not necessarily in church or out of church. or He's leading... Is youth band on mass? Okay. Uh, well, we can deal with it on two levels. Uh, I think for me, what I've always seen is uh, the thing that makes you better and more confident at singing is singing, which seems to be kind of the case with a lot of things. But hmm. the more you sing, the better you'll be at singing. The more confident you'll be at singing. Um, I used to go busking a lot when I was younger, just for fun mostly. And doing what? Busking, like playing for a change. Oh, dude. Okay, awesome. Um, so that that builds confidence because you're playing for perfect strangers in a place where they don't necessarily want you singing. Um, and uh, yeah, so I would just kind of I just used to take my guitar around everywhere and play um, and sing. What was the most awkward thing that ever happened? There's got to be something. Somebody throw something at you, give you something crazy. We just we would play like near the beach and and soak on like people didn't have like an understanding of the culture of busking like if you're gonna stand around and watch like throw some money in like yeah. so people would just feel like and just stand there for like five minutes just with there. so what you're saying is you, you didn't make money no not really okay uh, okay yeah uh that was really fun all right meet meet some interesting people you need to try some of that busking um yeah so but I think I think sing the more you sing the more comfortable you're going to feel. Um, but it sounds like in the case of your leading your, uh, your youth band, uh, your church, um, there's just, I think, I think it's good to, to understand, like, okay, well, it's good that at least 
it seems like I'm I'm leading well, but you also want to address your heart in that, and and I would say try to get out what the there's got to be some kind of fear mm. that's there, and just uh, just addressing that, uh, bringing that to God in prayer, talking about uh, I, I think nailing down what are what are you actually afraid of, and then you can address that. So if it's I'm afraid I won't do well and I won't have approval, then then you can address. Oh man, I actually kind of worshiping people's approval more than, than I am uh, what God thinks of me and, and that God perfectly loves me and accepts me because of what Jesus has done. Um, and so some, sometimes that stuff's really subtle, but it's actually very powerful in our hearts. And so when you can kind of name it and see it, you're like, oh, mm. I, can, I can repent of mm. that fear and then actually move forward. Do you have something on that? Dude, you know, I think that's really key. It's just the, the fear aspect that kind of motivates us, or drives us away from actually being able to just freely enjoy something like singing or leading people, the singing of, of praise of Jesus. I think we can, I always say this all the time, it's like you look at secular music, or I don't know, music outside of the church, and there's not that fear aspect. They kind of just write what they want to write because they, I mean, to an extent, but a lot of indie bands that kind of just have something that they love and that's what they want to, the, yeah, you want to put the best, out the best art comes. Out. Yeah, exactly. And so in the church, I think we kind of can fall victim to a lot of fears of just wanting people to accept or like or want to participate with the song. And I think we, we lose some of the just the essence of, of what it looks like to just freely lead people in singing. And, yeah, and looking at it as as so if you're if you are the you know, and there's people fight about if that's an appropriate title or not, the worship leader. Yeah. Yeah, sure. You really did, regardless of the fact that all of life should be worship, like you were leading worship at that time, and uh, that doesn't necessarily mean um, you were just the one leading the singing. Like, you should be leading in worship. So um, getting your mind off yourself and, mm. and your leading yeah. uh, and, and actually just worshiping in that is, is helpful uh, and right. That's sweet. Question? Question? You want a funny one or a serious let's, one? Let's go funny, man. Let's go funny. Okay. Let me find it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's no funny question. No, here it is. Mikey asks, Spurgeon said, Growing a beard is a habit most natural, scriptural, and beneficial. Mm -hmm. How does this play into the music that you write and play? Is this for, is this for him? <laughs> You're both kind of rocking a beard. Really I don't think it goes both okay. ways. Well, obviously I'm not as scriptural or... Uh, was the Natural, scriptural, and beneficial. Natural. Beneficial. Yeah. I thought there was more adjectives in there. Yeah. That's anyway. all I got. Well. Uh, yeah. I, do you ever feel like a uh, bit of like Sam Simpson cut that thing off? I do. One Sunday I actually <laughs> cut it off and led worship, and people thought it was a different person. Kind of thing, so it's kind of. I guess the the benefit is people will get really scared of you very easily. So I don't ahead. I don't have as much of one, but I I, I learned never to cut it off. Yeah, I look, you I look real weird. You should <laughs> real weird. do that. Man. Go ahead. Another one. Davy asks, "What are your other favorite hymns that we can expect to hear from you record in the future?" That's probably a question for both of you. So I have. I recorded on this record. Uh, sorry, I'm pulling up a Evernote thing so I can think of this stuff. Um, I recorded a rewrite of Oh for a Thousand Tongues to sing by Charles Wesley, which is a fantastic song. Um, the reason I did a rewrite is it has a very kind of, uh, it's really hard to get it out of the Irish jig mm. kind of feel. Um, but the lyrics are so great, I wanted to find a different way to do it. So we didn't release it. Um, it just didn't all come together in the end, but I'm going to kind of take a lot of what I had and I think put it on the, the next record um, that's a, a worship project. And then also also had a really good version of uh, Nothing But The Blood. You guys have one oh. too, which is great. Um, I This one's fairly, fairly different. I don't think you've heard that one. It's, it kind of draws out the Oh, yeah, um, yeah. The response every time. So yep, uh, might do that one. Uh, actually, tried to record that one, it failed. Um, 
and I don't know. Uh, might take a shot at missing the mighty power of God. Mm. We'll see. Oh, it is well, possibly. It is really good. Yo, we're looking at maybe Dylan there's a fountain. Got a pretty decent arrangement on that one. What other hymns are we singing? We're always singing lots of hymns. I feel like we've been singing a lot of the, like all of us are kind of singing a lot of the similar hymns, or which is kind of cool that we get to use arrangements of songs that a lot of guys have already yeah, taken. So, so yeah, we're trying to do that more and more. Yeah, Marcel music with having kind of unity across the board, whereas the past it was kind of just like no unity at mm-hmm. all. So. Uh, like how many arrangements have come out now? Yes. Literally, there's probably been 200 yeah. over the over the history. 1.2 million. Yeah. John Dunn. Exactly. No one's gonna beat that. How about what else we got? Questions. All right, this will be a perfect lead-in. Peter asks, "The song It's Not Enough' is one of the most heartbreaking songs for me to listen to. Can we get some background on it <clears throat> and maybe play it?" Oh, how about that? Play that song. Um, background. So that song, uh, uh, that song started on the piano. I had this, hmm. I had this piano line. Uh, I don't play a very good piano, but uh, well, don't speak well. Don't, worry um, about don't speak good. I yeah, I had this this kind of riff on the piano that's nowhere in the song anymore. I had to let it go. It's hard to hmm. let your baby change, yeah. but uh. It wasn't really necessary, but it's what kind of started me playing the song, and I had that refrain that's not enough, it's not enough, and um, and actually the line, uh, I could walk the world forever until my shoes were filled with blood, and I knew that that was kind of the kernel of the song, which is a lot of times how I write. There's a there's something central that I then slowly build onto. Um, and so that's, yeah, that's what happened with that one. And I, I originally thought it was going to be a thrice song and just never finished it. Um, so I think I, for Beggars and Major Minor, I was toying with the idea of finishing it. Dang, so it's been around for a while. The, the it, core. Yeah. That was all that really existed until okay. uh, until this project. So uh, a lot of it's really based out of, um, not based out of, but inspired by the book of Ecclesiastes, where uh, you see that um, the guy writing, he's like, he had everything, and it's like, it's not, it's not satisfying. Um, and so he's, he's basically trying to lay out, like, hey, you think you wanted that? I had that. It didn't satisfy me. Um, and so I wanted to write this song in that sense, uh, trying to really push this concept of there's nothing that you can find or achieve in life that's going to actually bring you uh, ultimate satisfaction. It's always going to leave you feeling empty and really leave the, the listener in that spot uh, rather than trying to give a, an answer, kind of push towards this uh, you know, existential angst uh, and let it sit in context with the rest of the record, the rest of the songs I've written, um, which has been nice as I've I've had a, a broader range of uh, songs that I've written. I feel like I have more freedom to to leave some songs in those kind of places um, and not provide everything within that. That's so. Um, what else about that song? Oh, the thing I like about it is that it doesn't. It's not. Um, it's not just building out this cliche of, which I think is a general kind of. Christian cliche. Oh, all those bad things like drugs and sex won't satisfy you. You need Jesus. Mm. Whatever. And it's like, no, actually, uh, your family's approval, your your success, your learning, your whatever, all these things um, that seem good, um, they're ultimately to satisfy you, and, and they eventually will destroy you as you give yourself um, fully to them because they, they won't satisfy you. And so then it progresses into this um, kind of uh, power thing at the end, which becomes, I think, the most destructive. And you see that playing out even in world history, how destructive those longings can be. Uh, but yeah, I like the 
kind of the scope of what it, it deals with there. Dude, Dunn wants me to play it. Sure, yeah. play it, man. <clears throat> no more talking. Just play that song. Let's talk more. Wrong. Make us cry. All right. I don't know if this is the right key to do it. Let's see. Uh, I might mess up chords because I wasn't did not practice. <laughs> The world, the wealth of men, was mine to squander. The towers of ivory rose beneath my feet. The palace is a pleasure mine to wander. The sum of it will leave me incomplete. Though every soul would hold my name in honor, the truest love is always by my side. My praise is sung by grateful sons and daughters. My soul would never still be satisfied. It's not enough. It's not enough. I could walk the world forever till my shoes are filled with blood. It's not enough. It's not enough. Oh, I could live for all to lift empire. Or spend the century seeking life with me. Oh, I indulge my every dark desire, exhausting every avenue of sin. It's not enough, it's not enough. I could walk the world forever till my shoes are filled with blood. It's not enough. Not enough. I could write all wrongs to ravish everything beneath the sun. It's not enough. It's not enough to make me whole. It's not enough. It never was. You, I was I was waiting for waiting to see what would happen, dude. Yeah. You have the I don't know if any I have a feeling you were like peeking out everyone's speakers. It's <laughs> possible. You have, you sing loud. <laughs> it's crazy. It's awesome. You're like your I guess all that busking. Yeah. Helped you out. Yeah. Dude, that's I, I think it's my uh, my grandma. My grandma's real loud. Oh yeah. Yeah. She like real like just. Loud voice, my uncle. Like, so I don't. Which thing is with me is I'm very quiet. You talk very quietly, yes. but you sing very loudly. I think the talking the quiet. I think I talk quiet because my voice needs rest. Well, no, it's like it feels loud to me if I'm talking normal. So I, but I'm not a 
loud personality, Dude. and so it, I end up mumbling and talking to Claire. Dude, that song is insane. Thanks, love that song. So good. Thank you. I'm sure the world agrees. What else we got? We got thumbs up. We're getting thumbs up. All right. Juan asked, Dustin, how did you connect with Mars Hill? It's a long, convoluted story. Um, Tell us. I, I probably get all the details or timelines wrong, but uh, I listened to Pastor Mark's sermons. I, one of my best friends was for a long time uh, Pastor Mark's executive assistant. And so I would hang with him, and Pastor Mark knew my music uh, and like blog about it every once in a while. So there was some kind of uh, connection, and then we ended up um, talking a few times, uh, hanging out. He told me that I would be a pastor and would work for him. Uh, wow, how about that? And I was like, All right. Uh, and my wife was really like, uh, didn't know who he was, and he told her that she was not amused. Um, <laughs> and now here we are. Uh, really so awesome. God, God has plenty since wow. here on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was basically like, that'd be cool. I'm not going to move to Seattle, though, so that's not going to happen. Then we planned in March to Orange County. And it's like, yeah, we're still not moving to Seattle. And then God's like, you got to move to Seattle. How about all right? Um, so, yeah, that was kind of, there were some connections um, before I ended up uh, becoming friends with a lot of people that worked here, played at Easter 2011 at uh, Questfield. And, but even then, I was already kind of on on the plan for the team to, to play in Orange County. Uh, so Dude, it's great. How do you like Seattle? I like it a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's weird how quick the fall came. All of a sudden it just it doesn't turned really in. happen. It kind of just it, but it was like it, it's cold all of a sudden. Yeah it sucks. It wasn't like kind of chilly and then cold. No, it's just, it's just <laughs> cold. Now we'll get colder. But so that's weird for being uh, so calibrated my whole life. Um, but I, it's weird going back home because I'm like, oh, it is a desert. I, I lived in a desert my whole life and I couldn't see it. Dude, lots of, lots of. Uh, can't why can't I think of the word for that when you plant trees around a church? No. Uh, Transplanting. No. Like when you have lots of trees that aren't supposed to be there, but you take care of them. Wow. Well, there's a word for this. Okay. It's a very normal word. Somebody, I, I, this is like the fifth time in the last month I've tried to tell okay. this. Okay, you should find that word. Yeah, all right. All right, we got any more questions? Yeah, we got tons. <clears throat> Let's hear them. Zach and Dustin, what is the lyric writing process like for both of you, and how do you involve God in the writing? Okay. Um, well, um, I can tell you kind of in a similar I mean, everybody has their own kind of way of writing. Some people start, I don't know, I used to start with like a melody and stuff, but I think as of late it's just kind of going to a, starting with a concept or an idea, usually uh, always rooted in something that's rooted in scripture. So um, praying the Holy Spirit would guide me in that. I know for the full length when we did that, it was a lot of, um, Writing the song, writing lyrics, and then getting feedback on those lyrics. So we met with some different guys who were pastors in the church who could kind of speak into some of the lyrical content theologically, getting some guidance there. And then honestly, the way it worked out with the full length too, like we did the Marshall student camp last year, and we played a bunch of those songs there. And then we we're like, some of those lyrics suck, <laughs> so we should change those. Um, and then like some of the songs actually wound up changing completely. Um, Dustin, you weren't really as, was as involved in that process, but like with Ghost yeah. Ship and other projects, you've been way more involved in the oversight of a lot of that, the writing and just helping to guide. And yeah, I mean, I I feel like I have some insight on in certain ways of how songs that had been written that were good like could be better um, just from my own kind of ticks of like what what bothers me of inconsistencies and things is actually helpful in wishing music so um, yeah 
but I I feel like I'm I'm just learning a ton about and even in making this record and looking to make another one just like oh man these are things that I really want to focus on mm -hmm. that I I didn't um, so I really like that we have super deep theological um, uh, thick songs uh, but I also think and I always use this as an example. I think your Oh God, which I put on my record, I think is a really good example of we need more songs like that that are about a profound uh, theological truth. So that song being God is always uh, near you. You're united to him um, uh, if you trust in Jesus by the blood of Jesus. And um, that's an amazingly comforting uh, truth that that song kind of camps in and lets you I think you can experience it as you sing it because it doesn't have a ton of content. So I think we need more songs that are like that, that are, are theologically profound and helpful, but also um, very simple and singable. Um, so that's that's where I want to push myself. I still have songs like Suffering Servant, which are super, super dense and thick and um, just straight scripture, really, and then also have stuff that's more reflective. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, because Grace Alone kind of has like the, the where you kind of packed in a ton of theological stuff from Ephesians 1. And yeah, I think the structure makes it make sense. Yeah. But still, I, so like, I think that's I think that's a good song. Yeah. Yeah. People you know, heard that song and been like, oh, I understood yeah. the gospel first time I heard song, which is like, good, because that's why I want to be writing it. But I think we also need those other songs. So, uh, for me, writing lyrics, it takes me a really long time because my brain is very much an editing brain mm. uh, and analytical. So I am like, it's as if I'm like trying to build something with one hand and tearing it down with the other hand. It's hard to make progress doing that. Uh, so I'm trying to, I was trying to learn how to get more out there before I start uh, tearing it down. But, um, yeah, I'll usually start with, like, a kernel of an idea, and uh, I just have to kind of hack at it for a long time, and sometimes there'll be bursts where it kind of comes out a little more, but um, I also tend to finish songs under pressure for recording, and hmm. I realized I wasn't writing. Uh, like, I was like, how long are you writing? And I would try to write, so I can't finish any songs. And they were like, let's like, set, a, let's set a date. I was like, okay, i got to write now. So it was... Same as always, just up to the deadline. Brand, brand song. Dude, it's crazy. It's right. It's not. It's not a. Not a good thing. I just don't know how to not. Well, do. I I can tell you how like uh, <clears throat> Chad from uh, Chad from King's Kaleidoscope writes songs. He writes songs with a lot of slap bass. That's where he starts. He starts slapping the bass. You want to make a guest appearance here, Chad? Join us. What's up, folks? Hey. Join us, man. What are you guys doing over here? We're just talking about songwriting. Oh, we're we're just slapping the bass right over there. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> loud. I was just walking by to see if you could hear it. Let, let me segue with another question. Okay, let's do this. Max asks, says, Citizens is by far my favorite band. When will we see a new album? Oh, Zach man. and Chad. Oh. And Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't really see that. I had it. You, you added all that. Wow. Wow. Um, well, we actually just finished up a Christmas EP, which we're pretty stoked about. So Jamming. took a bunch of old, just the classic carols, and then an old Dutch, Dutch reformed, reformed hymn. hymn. So I found this hymn. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe you guys know of it, but I, I hadn't heard of it until a couple years ago, and I just found it online. And the melody is just, it's like, I still haven't I, you heard would, the original. Yeah, you would never teach it to anyone. It's just like it's like <laughs> good to know. It's, it's just all, all over the place, and uh, <laughs> oh, like God. this is never gonna work. So for a couple of years, I was singing it to the tune of "Come Not Found." I was like, I really got to write a melody for this. So this year, I did. And Zach recorded it, and it's jamming. So it's it's the best uh, best lyrics on the incarnation uh, by far yeah. that I've yeah. ever seen. It's Very good. fantastic. We sang it to "Come Not Found" too. Yeah. Sweet. It's really good. Pretty sweet. You got some opera singers, too. We did. We got That's a little... A surprise, you go to... I think Brian described it best. It's like going back to the 40s in Disneyland. A little, little action. 
on there. Brian's sounds like Brian's an Brian's producer. Do, yeah, Brian's a producer. Yeah, I don't know. We'll be curious to see what you guys. It's we're great. gonna, you know, little nostalgia going on. What do What are you doing, Chad? What's Kings doing these days? Kings is working hard on our record. Uh, yeah, we're working on our first first LP. Uh, I don't know. That's what we're doing. Just busting it out in the studio every day right now. How insane will it be? We, I don't know. We'll see how the bass goes today. We'll see. But there's a lot of slap bass. There. There's a lot of everything going on right now, and I'm getting a headache. That's why I'm walking over here. <laughs> it's good though. Yeah. I'm pretty stoked on it. We had to step outside when Brian started putting delay on the bass. That's what. Yep. What are we doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Uh, yeah, as crazy as it is, uh, our sounds. I'm planning on putting out another record with Marshall Music in August. Say so, what? So yeah, there you go. Go get. When's it. ours supposed to come out? I found that. I don't know when. Next year. Say that. Spring. Early next year. Early next year. Early next year. 2014. Early next year. 2014. And then hopefully we'll see another citizen later next year. There you go. You heard it. You what? Gonna, no? Yes? Do you have a question? Sure. Questions? Yeah. All right, I'm going to throw you dudes a curveball. Okay. You can, right. you can knock this down, but my way of Chris says, would you guys be able to play a duet of Oh God? What about all three of you? What? Oh God. <laughs> the problem oh God. Yeah, that's... is going to be that Which I one? inadvertently, against all my rules, yeah, you, changed, you changed, changed your melody. Yeah, you did. I didn't mean to. You it's did? all good. We change yeah. rejoice. We sing it like rejoice like that. It works, dude. It really works. Uh, so anyway, if we sing it together, it'd probably be funny. It really. Um, works. Yeah, I did not mean to do that. Though, uh, what's funny about that song is it's such a good corporate worship song, and you didn't write it as such, or at least thinking of that. No. No. So, I, I mean, what basically what happened with that song, is, and the reason that I recorded it as well, which is someone's asked, like, they just put it on their LP, what, <laughs> what did you put it on yours? Um, you guys had already recorded it, because that record was done for a while before it came out. Yeah. Yes. Well, and yeah. so, um, I was just going off the, that you had done the real quiet version on the EP, but a sermon had come up to where I was like, oh man, this song would be so great, but... It's not really structured that well that way to, to be like mm -hmm. I want it to be like big and kind yeah. of uplifting rather than kind of sitting in that the, the heavy spot like and so I, I just did some minor changes and made the the chorus really major and, and uplifting and a little more rocking than unit putting on record too but we ended up seeing the version that we were doing so much in the past six months ago it was probably one of the top two songs that we mm. played, it just kept tying. Yeah. Whatever. It was just, and it, so that's what I think I was talking about earlier. It's like it's just a helpful song to sing, and because it's not about so much, it's actually easy to tie into the different things. Dude, so. it's yeah. awesome song. Yeah, I didn't. Is somebody gonna play Oh God? I don't know. You guys don't have to. All I can't. I, I have to go. I mean, they need, they need my, my opinion on some slides. Get your bass in here. There you go. Fuck Chad. <laughs> I think that I think we should hear other Dustin songs. What do you think? Though? What's your request? What do I you think we Dustin should play? hear Dustin play in his finished guitar. Right, we'll do that. So this song, yeah, it's just supposed to be big, awesome. kind of like. Rejoicing song in the fact that um, kind of centered around this idea that, that Jesus on the cross says it is finished. That our atonement is completely uh, accomplished, paid for. Um, that he's done everything, and so there's two things that come out of that. There's there's a rest that comes out of it because we don't work for our salvation. We don't work for God's uh, approval, and that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about with. Wanting to write songs that uh, that have a strong sense of, of the gospel, like that's the gospel that that we don't earn it, that we don't achieve it, oh. um, that it's given to us. And um, the other thing that comes out of it, uh, 
side of unrest is uh, its confidence to be able to to move forward to so in the song it uses kind of a battle language it says uh, go bravely in the battle knowing he has won the war uh, so that, this uh, image is kind of I think Pastor Mark uses it at times uh, I feel like I've heard other places too but the idea that when uh, on D-Day in World War II uh, once the beach was taken the war was essentially over um, it was decided then that there's still kind of skirmishes to, to fight but uh, so we're in a similar situation where uh, at the cross uh, Satan, yeah. Satan and death are defeated yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that gives us confidence to go and and continue in, in the small fights that, that we have. Yeah. Dude, play it, man. Alright. There's no need that can redeem us. There's no right nor magic word. Only by the work of Jesus and salvation be secured. It is finished, he has done it. Let your weary heart rejoice. Our redemption is accomplished. Raise your shout with a ragged voice. And go bravely into battle, knowing he has won the war. It is finished, lift your head, and we no more. There's no sacrifice to offer, there's no penance to complete. Really drink of living water, without money from in peace. It is finished, he has done it. Let your weary heart enjoy it. Our redemption is accomplished. Raise a sound with a ragged voice. And go bravely into battle. Knowing he has won the war. It is finished. Lift your head. Let every sinner rejoice. Hear the dying victory. Cry. Raise up your voice, sing it out to earth and sky. In the spirit, he's done it. Let your weary heart rejoice. Our redemption is accomplished. Raise a shout with a ragged voice and go bravely into battle. Knowing he has won the war, it is finished. Lift your head and weep no more. Yeah, dude, it's a great song. Thanks, man. I love the. It's like so many. You sing back background on that one, there. No harmony, dude. I was gonna ask. Yeah, the, a couple. The high thing on that song. That's not me, though, right? I think we tried to have you do that one. That one. It's somebody else, right? I think maybe him. Because I couldn't do it. I, I was going to say, like, there either... Is that the one we were, like, having a deal and just killing you? Yeah, I couldn't do it. I sounded like a pig being slaughtered. <laughs> Never make me do that again. That's right. horrible. All right, what do we got done? All right, Michael wants to know, will there ever be a song that features all the band leaders and worship directors from Mars? Wow, so, like, 14 of us? Well, we, 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 do, we do... Uh, we do gang vocals. We uh, do, so it's happened. It's times, already been done. Yeah, it's it is finished. Whoever, right whatever the worship directors <laughs> are like around Seattle area and yeah, can make it. So you kind of know when like you hear gang vocals and they almost sound too good. It's like just shouldn't do that. Um, we tried last time. It was only we only could get dudes. It was in the morning. Yeah. And, uh, we tried to really quickly to do falsetto and yeah, do it. we. Failed instantly. We tried the, the bass too. And uh, yeah. still, still. But we were doing some uh, for pre Christmas EP too. Yeah, that those, was fun. those were great. We had a good mix of yeah, guys and girls on it. Yeah. And we did we did a lot of <coughs> some gang vocals on mine, which was a lot of the Bellevue interns and so, that was fun. so to answer the question, it probably won't 
won't be a song anytime soon where there's like 14 of us lined up on a stage. Take it first. That'd be a lot of verses. It'd be like full, I'm just, full Charles Wesley. Yeah. Yeah. Him. yeah. yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Done? We're looking at you, man. Yep. Uh, you need to show your face here in a minute. Jonathan Dizem asks... Jonathan Dizem. Really? Can, wait, really? <laughs> uh, can Zach Bolin play a song now? Can I play a song? Yep. Wow. What, what song? We should probably tune this because it's not been sounding well. What song? Oh, Peter asks, can you show me how to tune a guitar? <laughs> can you show me how to tune really? a guitar? No. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> Yeah, you, uh, so you, the song, what song, Dad? Whatever you got up your sleeve, man. You know, give the kids what they want. I know. Alright, well, I guess we'll play a song here. Somebody request one real quick. Nope. We already talked about Oh God. About yeah. Oh God. All right, we can do that. You know, do you have this problem where you forget the lyrics to your songs? Dude, did you you heard about the story? Uh, the was it was it R15? What was that? No, we had like a leadership or so training day after, and uh, Pastor Mark threw me under the bus and told me to play Oh God. Like <laughs> we didn't have it in the slides or anything. Do you I know like that? I I. I I don't think I've heard this. It was his birthday, and like they're like, oh. we're going to have you go up and sing Happy Birthday. So it's like, they went up and they started talking, and they let him have the mic. And he was like, we're going to do that. Just, I like, he loves that song. He's like, just doesn't play it. Play okay. And I was just like, and the problem with that song is like, dude, it's also like, it's like, da 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 da, you're there. That you, so, yeah, yeah. And it was horrible. They, the guys were running around in the back. Like, I could see them trying to like get the slides. And I was like, are we? I was trying to talk about the song, and it's like, are we going to get this? So like, and it was just a room full of people sitting there, like, so awkward. Dude. And uh, I was like, I'll teach you the chorus. And that's what you did. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Dude, I've, yeah, I've been there. My first time with John Dunn on a radio show, we, they asked me to play in tenderness, and I, I skipped about seven words on just a whole measure. Mm. But I did make a Jewish lady cry. Right? Wasn't that the... That's what she said. That she said her she, quote was... Her you, quote was... You made you just an made old Jewish lady old, cry. Yeah, you made an old Jewish lady cry. So, if there's any... Well, never mind. Um, yeah. Uh, in the valley Oh God In the quiet Oh God in the shadow, oh God, am I breaking, oh God, oh God, you never leave my side. Your love will stand firm through all my life in my search, oh God, in my wandering, oh God. When I feel alone, oh God, am I lowest, oh God, oh God, you never leave my side. Your love will stand firm through all my life oh, 
high no depth no anything else can pull us apart we are joined as one by blood hope will rise as we become more than conquerors through the one who loves Basically what I did, I yeah, I dropped it um, so it doesn't have the key. Yes, yeah, so you don't have jump, to jump an octave jump. I think it's a lot more like corporate. Yeah, way better. So it makes the one part not super low, yeah. one part not super high. So uh, I think on the so we're doing those acoustic sessions. I think we actually did it in, in G. Oh, on that. that's cool. Um, yeah. Talk about the acoustic sessions. Acoustic Talk sessions. About so we're gonna start doing this thing. We did it with my. With this record, current record, uh, where we're going to basically backing up, we want to make um, we're writing music for the church. It's coming out of the church. It's for the church to sing. But at the same time, we also want to make uh, just really great records out of those songs. Um, and the idea behind that is um, the songs that we sing are really important. Um, and as we listen to these songs over and over. They they inform us uh, theologically, and, and as we uh, listen to them more and more and sing them, they, they end up transforming uh, us. And so, uh, if you hear a song with poor theology, a lot of times that's transformative in a in a bad way. And uh, we're trying to make uh, I think songs that are going to transform you uh, to be more and more like uh, Jesus and uh, if we make really great records, hopefully everyone's going to want to listen to those all the mm. time. So, I mean, that was one of the main things when I uh, first finished your record. I was just like, this is fantastic. Like, I love listening to this record. And I've, uh, I haven't said that about, I don't mean, I, I don't own a worship record. So, uh, mm. that, was, that was really cool for mm. me to be like, cool. I want to put this on in my house when I'm cleaning the kitchen or something. And it's like... helpful to me to listen to and fun to listen to and so I want the records to be really really great at the same time though uh, what's working on the record is always not completely transferable um, to people in different contexts um, but we're trying to write those songs to where they can be stripped down and played in any kind of way and so we do the, the how to videos which kind of show here's the here's the chords really stripped down but also and then we did we're doing this middle kind of, uh, Acoustic session where it's like acoustic, bass, drums, piano. Like it's still kind of rock and it's, it's still sounding like this is the song, but it doesn't have all these bells and whistles on it. So hopefully that's um, just fun to listen to, but also a tool for people out there leading worship to say like, oh, okay, 
it gives me an idea of where I could where I could take it um, in my own uh, local context in my church. Yeah. So I'm excited about those. We're going to be releasing one every week. I think we did eight of them for uh, for this record. Uh, I'm still sad that we didn't do Suffering Sir. Yeah, we'll do that in the future. Uh, but we'll be doing one a week, so it should be one out next Monday or Tuesday. Where are we going? Wednesday. Wednesdays? Every Wednesday? Yeah, worship Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, one came out Worship today. Wednesday. What came out today? Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages came out today. So you can go check out the uh, acoustic session of Rock of Ages. Go to marshill.com slash music. Um, click resources. Mm -hmm. And so there's the core charts and, and how-tos from all the stuff we put out. But now on this record and future records, there'll be uh, a little acoustic session. Dude. And, uh, and, uh, done. Right on. I think we'll do two more questions. Two more questions. And we'll let you guys get on new fans. How about that? <clears throat> okay, this, this is a serious one. Uh, Marcia asks, I've been listening to Mark Driscoll's new sermon on idolatry. I wonder how you both deal with people that idolize you as artists. How do you handle that, and what is your experiences? Uh... Stumped you. It's a complex question mm -hmm. because the the person's issue is different than my issue being in that position. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as what idol is actually being uh, worshipped, but um, I think the best way to combat anything. Uh, like that, and to think rightly about it is to have a sense of a sense of yourself as um, one who receives everything. That um, so I, I wrote a song about that. There is a song called "Beggars," and um, the idea is that you, in the end, are. You can't claim that you did something on your own, that, that it's your accomplishment. Like, always traces back to something that you were given. So you don't decide where you were born, what time, uh, to what parents, oh. to um, you know, decide uh, how you look, what your name is. like, um, And on and on and on and on, you don't... Uh, you can't control whether you wake up tomorrow. You, you know, like you you have so little control um, that if you have a sense of that, um, it fosters a great sense of gratefulness. Um, and so, when someone is well, when someone says something like that, like people say, like, "Oh man, you're like you're like God, bro." It's like the furthest thing from. From the truth, and uh, when it's that funny, it's it's just comical, and it's like uh, clearly, clearly that is not true. Um, but even with more kind of subtle stuff, uh, just having that sense of, of gratefulness, um, and uh, it, that's at least for me, that's mm. that's I think what's really helpful. That's sweet. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been I'm, I'm, I haven't had nearly the amount of Exposure, I guess, if you will, that we've had through thrice, but definitely, I mean, I think in all cases, anytime you're like leading people, there's going to be moments of idolatry and different things that we would wrestle with. I, I think for me, it's like I'm not very well at receiving uh, like encouragement, and so like for me, sometimes I like will. I just always want to like deflect something, um, mainly because I know my heart and I know that uh, how quickly I can get to this place of of wanting to grab a hold of those things and use those things as affirmation. Um, and so um, I think because you know, especially just leading worship, I, I don't know. I don't really look at, and I don't think any of us really do like look at myself as something other than just a guy who leads church and, you know, gets to lead worship at 
in the U district with a bunch of college students and a few hundred people, and it's nothing glamorous about it. You should come and check out our building one day. <laughs> Go to our bathrooms and <clears throat> try not to get mugged by a homeless guy. Um, so it's just kind of that's like my, I guess, if you will, reality most of the time. And so um, I think the, the biggest thing that I see that I try and do is when I see like people taking it to maybe like a weird place. I, I don't know, like hopefully there's an opportunity to at least dialogue about that or at least as much as possible put things in a direction where it's um, to Jesus, you know, because it's always that weird conversation. It's like, oh, like you kind of said, like yeah. some sort of comment that's more focused on you than on what we're all about, and that's like using music to, to, to glorify Jesus, to glorify God. And so I think that's the thing I try and do as best as possible to only succeed, but point people back to that. Yeah, I think it, I think it, depending on your personality, you've got to learn to do that gracefully uh, mm -hmm. and not, because I think it's very easy to go, go like, oh, like, and try, it, all of a sudden it becomes very awkward and like that's not loving that person who was trying to trying to be kind and mm. encouraging yeah uh, and so yeah it's true. figuring out ways to be like uh, I think you can rejoice in their happiness mm -hmm. and that and be like that's really you know, that's really cool and then kind of just like, turn with them and be like, yeah. because of this so um, yeah cool ready for the last one yeah Bring it. Bring last it. one's coming from Josh what are your musical influences, and what new albums are you listening to right now? Well, does it have to be a new album? No. no. I can't answer this without like, looking at my phone. Yeah. Just, my brain will go blank. New albums. Um, I love the latest National Record. Yeah, it's yeah. a great one. And been listening a bit to the new Kings of Neon. Uh, ben Heim, have you heard that? Mm -hmm. I've been digging that. Uh, Volcano Choir. Dude, that new singer is so good. Mm -hmm. okay, so good. Uh, there's a band that my brother has been playing with live called um, Sir Sly. Uh, they go a little like that, so, like you listen to the first round, that's that was good, and then it just sticks. It just goes. Like, it's good. <laughs> I like it. Um, sorry, do some. Dude, I don't know. Uh, I've been really into this band lately called Maiden Heights. Um. First season, I was pretty into the new Vampire Weekend album, and I kind of got burned out on it. Um, yeah, that's an interesting. One. It is. I like I like some of it and some of it like. But yeah, the new National. Pretty excited about the new Arcade Fire mm -hmm. album. I watched that SNL performance. Did you watch that? I, I will. It's pretty cool and creepy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A little bit of a change. So. Yeah, the new song is interesting. It's like uh, channeling uh, Stand Alive or something. Yeah, dude, it's like a disco <laughs> 70s vibe going on there. And then what were the musical influences? What are, you, what are your musical influences? I don't know. I feel like that's really hard to, yeah. to tell because uh, if your brain is like a pot, you're putting a bunch of like... Uh, ingredients in, and it turns into a stew, and it's no longer really any of those things. Do you have an album that like changed you? <sighs> like in how I look at music. Yeah, um, or like you heard it, and you're like, oh yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of albums. Um, the one that came to my first was. You look at that. I was figuring, this is the last question. I was trying to figure out how to turn it off when we were <laughs> done with the last question. Dramatically. <laughs> um, oh. uh, man, uh, refuse shape of pumpkin. Dude, that, yeah, that'll change you. Is, uh, wow. It's something else. I think it's my favorite heavy music record. Actually, I know it's my favorite heavy music record. Um, 
Beatles. Beatles were very formative for me. Yeah. Beatles. It's pretty good. Well, is that it? I was just kind of petered out there. We kind of did. People are probably asleep, checked out by now. Not really hanging out with us. Uh, all right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank Go you. buy Dustin's new record. It's awesome. Oh, actually, I will say uh, there's a coupon. Uh, I'll tweet it right after this at Dustin Hensher. Uh and it is for Best Buy for six ninety nine for the record. So I've already course. seen some pictures of people. Yeah, we we just want to push that because uh, they kind of stepped out. And we're like, yeah, we'll back you and, and do this promotion. So we don't want that to be uh, in vain uh, for them. So uh, yeah, we love it if people went and made use of that and got it for cheap. Six ninety nine. It's awesome. I got it in my head. Dude. It's, it's, might as well steal that thing. Don't do that. Okay. Right. Don't, don't steal it. All right, we're done.